Hey guys, it's Karen and I want to review Negroland by Margot Jefferson. So just a little bit of background on Margot Je Jefferson. She is a Pulitzer Prize winning author. Um, she won it for criticism, I believe, and she also currently teaches at Columbia. So I wanted to read this because I had heard about it so much on booktube and I can't think of who raved about this book. I tried to search and find it and I was not able to. So if you uh, read this book and did a video of it, please just let me know below and I will happily link to it. I can't remember who it was. But anyway, um, this is the story of Margot Jefferson growing up in Chicago. Um, and she calls it Negro Land because she kind of views it as like the way she grew up was almost like being part of this third culture. So there's kind of the white culture, the black culture, and then there is like Negro Land, which is this very elite, affluent black culture. Um, her father was a doctor. Her mom used to be um, a social worker. However, she stopped when um, she had kids. And actually, going back to her dad, her dad was not only a pediatrician, but he actually was in charge of pediatrics at a hospital. So he's kind of a big deal. <laughs> so in uh, listening to an interview with Margot, uh, she actually describes her culture growing up as a separate culture and she views it as almost like a secret society. She calls it being a cultural mulatto and that they strived for whiteness. So while striving for whiteness, they actually um, viewed themselves as above whites. And so this is kind of a, a description of the values that were present in her home. We were taught to resent the relative lack of attention our achievements garnered. We were taught that we were better than the whites who looked down on us, that we were better than most whites, period. But that this would rarely, if ever, be acknowledged by white people with all their entitlement. Not the entitlement a government provides, but the kind history bestows. This is your birthright, says history. Privilege is provisional. Privilege can be denied, withheld, offered grudgingly, and summarily withdrawn. Entitlement is impervious to the kinds of verbs that modify privilege. Our people have had to work, scrape for pri privilege, gobble it down when those who would snatch it away weren't looking. Keep a close watch. So this story really starts off with her childhood in Chicago and it actually goes kind of grade by grade and shows her growing up. Um, there were only two schools at the time. This takes place in like the 50s and 60s. Um, there were only two schools at the time that accepted black students in Chicago. And so she ends up going to the University of Chicago Lab School, um, which one of the reasons I enjoy reading about this is because I am familiar with uh, a lot of the street intersections she talks about. I'm familiar with the lab school and it's cool to read a book uh, that takes place in a place you're familiar with. She grows up going to the lab school and it just, the book takes you through her school experience at the lab school. And um, it also goes through um, summers at Interlochen, which is actually in Michigan. It's a very uh, prestigious arts camp that kids go to in the summer. It's kind of a big deal. And uh, she went there during the summers as well. So you can hear about her experience is there. So what I found really interesting is you hear about all these really like prestigious, affluent, kind of highbrow experiences that she has as a kid and yet there's still all of this prejudice that is that she's experienced all this racism and so it really goes to show um what people say about right, white privilege I see so many memes and things on Facebook saying like I'm not privileged I've worked hard for everything I have and yet her family is so affluent and so educated and racism is still there so you know that is white privilege being able to live your life without all these things that she dealt with um there's one scene where her family goes on vacation and they book this really nice hotel room and when they get there it's not available well it probably was available but they found out who wanted the room and they booked them in this really trashy room. There's another portion of the book as well where she talks about just all 
the people in their community that are still getting killed because they are black and um, just because you're an affluent black person does not mean you can escape this fate. So there's that theme of privilege and what that means to her but there's also a theme of um, just the expectations that everyone has for her um, and balancing those kind of between the street expectations of a black person and these bourgeois kind of fancy expectations that her family has. Um, it seemed like there was so much pressure all the time for her to be a certain way, not too loud, not too quiet, not too like everything. Um, she had to be the best all the time and uh, it just seemed like there was so much pressure on her. There's also this idea of matricide, which is basically like not fulfilling your mom's expectations of you and making your mom look bad by your decisions. Finally, all these expectations and pressures on her to be not too much this, not too much that, and fit into all these boxes kind of resulted in um, some mental illness issues and she goes into those in more depth. I really enjoyed this book. If you are interested in learning more about this particular uh, aspect of black culture, I would definitely think you should read this. Um, I'm curious what you guys have read recently and loved and I will see you later. Bye.